and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we continue this celebration, we do so as sinners. So let us acknowledge those sins to prepare ourselves to receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that may fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be forever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the, co who have the care of all, that you need show have not unjustly condemned for your might is the source of justice your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all for you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved and in those who know you you rebuke temerity but though you are master of might you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us, for power whenever your will attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind, and you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come, and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones, 
according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, do you not did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. His slave said to him, do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, no, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers, today's gospel is is often a stumbling block for Jesus' disciples, for all of us. Because first, on its face, it's talking about, the parable is talking about sinners and saints, in a sense. The sinners, who obviously sin, break the law, do things that they shouldn't be doing, and then us saints, who do our best to be good disciples of Christ, who follow the moral teachings, who follow the law, the civil law, and we do our best. And Jesus is saying, well, you know what? You have to be around the saints and the sinners until that time. And that's a stumbling block for us. Now, civilly, you know, who wants to live next door to a murderer? Who wants to live next door to somebody who's a thief, who's untrustworthy, the whole gamut of crimes? Who wants to? And for the most part, we all kind of agree with it, whether we should or not, we agree that, you know, maybe it's not the best for our children to live next door to somebody who might hurt them. And so we do our best not to. But the stumbling comes when it comes to sinners who don't break the law, but just break God's law, our church law. It comes to those types of sinners because we end up sitting next to them, socially distant, mind you, six feet apart, but we sit next to them in church. And it's hard to do that because we look at them and say, what are they doing here? How are they allowed into God's kingdom here on earth? Why would they even show their face in church? Sisters and brothers, I've heard this multiple times and I'm sure you have. Who are we to judge? I think the Holy Father said that when it came to certain moral sins, that who are we to judge? We have to look within ourselves. Yet we all want to be good disciples of Christ, and we all want to know that we're following Jesus' teaching, and we look at others and think, but they're not doing that. What am I supposed to do about that? How am I supposed to help them? We have a tendency to judge people for being immoral. We have a tendency to set the bar for others really high, but set the bar for ourselves of love. And, and this, is, this is what I mean. When I was in D.C., we, I was doing so, I was looking for Catholic blockers because I was really looking for some inspiration for a homily. As I'm preaching here today, I was looking for some inspiration. So I looked at the different Catholic blogs 
And they were really actually very good. They were very helpful. One of them, though, and it was a local block, it was out of the Archdiocese of Washington. It wasn't the, an archdiocesan block, but it was a parishioner of a, of a church in the Archdiocese. She was mean. There's no way to get around it. She was mean. She was judgmental. She was showed no compassion, no forgiveness, no mercy for anybody that she judged as a sinner. Now, in the South, when I was in the South, when people used to either write about those that they disagreed with or that they didn't like for whatever reason, they usually couched it in, well, bless their heart, they're trying. Bless their heart, and then they would go to tear them down. Evidently, up North, it's, well, we're trying to save their soul. I say what I say, so says this blagger, because we're trying to, I'm trying to save their soul. I'm trying to have them avoid hell. And then she would tear people apart, destroy them. And as I said, we hold the bar for ourselves kind of low, but we hold the bar for others a little bit higher. And we also judge people for what they do wrong. Now this person, I am willing to bet, if she was tearing people down, she was not dealing with any of the things that these poor folks who were on the receiving end of her poison fingers and her poison blog were dealing with. And this is what I mean. She would tear apart single women, divorced women, divorced people, men and women both. But she would tear them apart. Well, who do they think they are getting divorced and remarried? Who do they think they are receiving communion? I'm willing to bet that she's not dealing with any of that, that she's not had to deal with it, and that she has no idea what it's like to be a divorced and remarried Catholic sitting in the pew, maybe not receiving communion, not receiving the Eucharist. Well, too bad, she would say. Again, she was probably not dealing with it. We have a tendency to, to dismiss people's excuses when we don't have to deal with it ourselves. When we're not dealing with something, we think it's real easy to deal with. We think it's real easy to overcome because, well, I'm not dealing with it. I don't have to deal with it. And God forbid that you did and you overcame it. Sometimes people are even worse. But this person probably didn't have to deal with ever having the, the chance or the possibility of being denied communion. So she sees nothing wrong with denying others because she's judged them as sinners. She judged them as, as bad. And so as I said, we have the tendency to set that bar high. But when it comes to us, when it comes to us, that's a different story. When it comes to us, we expect that bar to be low. We expect people to accept the words, I'm sorry, from us and mean it. And say, oh, okay, okay, yeah, you said you're sorry, you apologize. Okay, it's all better. Do we expect that? Or do we accept that from others? When they say, you know, I made a mistake, I'm sorry. Do we judge them? Do we demand that they be punished? Or do we say, okay, you made a mistake. In our cancel culture these days, it's so easy to vilify, to savage, to denigrate, because we hide behind cheeky usernames. And no matter what anybody says in way of an apology, it just gets the pile on, it's just worse. Because they said something inappropriate in the first place, and how dare they be human? How dare they make mistakes? Thankfully, my sisters and brothers, God has a different point of view, which is good for us. Because you know what? We're all sinners. All of us. Because if all the sinners, like this woman, this blogger, wants, if all the sinners were expelled from God's kingdom here on earth, and we said to them at church, you know what, you're a sinner, before you sit, even sit in the pew, get yourself to a confessional. And I don't have time to hear your confession, so get out. If we did that, the church would be even more empty than it is now. And how does that look for those who may not have had the problems that say a divorced and remarried Catholic has? Who may not have had a problem, the same problem as the divorced person who had to get out of her marriage or their, his marriage because of abuse, both physical and mental. We don't know. And so we shouldn't be judging them as sinners, as immoral, as wrong, as bad, because we don't know what their life was like. 
I'm not talking criminal. Obviously, that, that's a different set of standards. But when we sit in the pew and we look over at somebody and we say, I know what they did last night. I know what kind of party they were doing. I know who she lives with. I know who he's dating and who he's spending time with. I know that. And they're wrong. They're sin. No, sisters and brothers. Because the reality is, Jesus tells us, we have to be among the sinners and the saints until such a time as Judgment Day comes, and then He, He will judge us. Not us. He'll judge us. Not us Him or us them. He judges us. Until that time, what we have is this opportunity. Because again, thanks be to God that He doesn't have the same attitude and mentality that we do. We have this opportunity. When we sit among the saints or when we sit among the sinners, we can be an example of Christ personified to them. We could show them what it is to be a good disciple of Christ, a kind and compassionate or forgiving disciple of Christ. We accept them for who they are, flaws and all, because that's what we expect of others. And when we accept them for their flaws and all, when we show them what it is to be a disciple of Christ, as I've said multiple times, we show them the face of Christ. And in, in the end, that's exactly what Jesus expects of us to do. In following his gospel and living out his message, in our lives, we show the people around us the face of Christ. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the Lord Jesus knows our thoughts before we even think them. Let us now ask him for what we need. That the church be a sacrament of unity, teaching us to be people of trust, rooted in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the servant leaders of our pastorate of St. Bridget, St. Casimir, and St. Elizabeth of Hungary work to guard the quality of our environment, our air, our water. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we as parishioners are ever mindful of the unemployed and the underemployed and assist them with the needs, services, and care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that we may greet the underprivileged, the handicapped, seeing in their face the countenance of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that we guard the sanctity of the Eucharist, always seeing it as our summit and source of life and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the repose of the soul of Nellie Belts, for whom this Mass is being celebrated. And we also pray for our pastorate this morning. We pray for St. Elizabeth of Hungary, St. Bridget, and St. Casimir. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those intentions and the quietness of our hearts. God of all goodness and grace, you are with us always. Hear our intercessions. Hear our pleading. And as always, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each of us has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through your Son, Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we proclaim... by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, William our Archbishop, and all the people who serve you. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and to all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, St. Casimir, St. Bridget, St. Elizabeth of Hungary, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, at the Savior's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith, on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us now offer some, each other some sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away all of the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. My sisters and brothers, once again, we are not around the table of the Lord. So now let us pray the spiritual communion prayer until that time when we all could be together to receive our Lord in the most blessed sacrament. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <laughs> your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements, a couple things. First and foremost, um, we say goodbye to our seminarian, Peter. Um, Peter is of his generation, and since he's been living with us, it was Christmas in June and July because he, he got a lot of packages from different places. And it was nice because it was it was actually having a little bit of a little bit more life in our priory. So we're going to miss Peter, and we thank you for coming and being with us. We're going to have to have him sign a non-disclosure clause because what he <laughs> heard at our dinner table at, uh, in the evening, my God. But we're thankful that Peter is with us, and we pray for him. And I ask you all to continue to pray for Peter and his vocation. Second, you hear the music in the background. We do this um, every week. Bernie plays the music. Bernie works full time. Sometimes Bernie has three different things going on at once, yet she's still here playing our music. So I would ask you, if you see her, thank her for that, because we have to do this for the foreseeable future. And third, third, yet again, St. Casimir, St. Bridget, and St. Elizabeth of Hungary have come through. We delivered 800, over 800 bad lunches this week. And so if you think about it, because they do give some lunches to families, so there's, they get more than one, well over 700 people will be fed this week because of our pastoring. We thank God for our ability to do that, and we continue to pray that we're able to do that. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, our Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.